everybody. Welcome to the Believe in Hornets podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. My name is Sam. Muggsy is with me. Muggsy, how are you? I'm good, partner. How's it going? It's going well. Yeah, cheers to you. Cheers, cheers to you. to you, brother. Absolutely. Uh, got a Guinness over here. My, my biggest, um, like, missed opportunity of 2020 was to get to yeah. Dublin to get a, 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 to be a certified pourer of Guinness. Like, that was my dream, mm. my goal at the end of 2019. Hopefully, maybe this year, maybe next year, I can get over to Ireland and get that certificate. <laughs> Very, I want that. I want that. Piece, it's the most important piece of paper in my life. Um, I'm quite sure it's going to happen when time permits. I'm <laughs> sure you're going to make it happen. We'll make it happen. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. going to get over there. Um, but yeah, <laughs> otherwise, gorgeous day in Charlotte. Um, oh, it feels like springs here. The time's about to change, I think, here soon. I think this weekend. So it's hopefully you know, the cold weather's behind us. But I see I see what you're wearing. Uh, you hitting the links today? I hit the links today. My boy came in town. He gave me a call. My little fella named this guy right here. Yeah, that guy right there, a little spud where we was out on the links today. He and my son and my boy, we were just enjoying the day. You know, it was a sunny day outside. You know, he came in town and I was, you know, had an opportunity to catch up with each other. We always uh, like to shoot the, you know, shoot the breeze when we have an opportunity. So it was a good day today. Who amongst your former NBA, like uh, your brethren, really brings it on the golf course? Well, I, I must say, you know, it's Dell. You know, Dell brings it pretty, pretty often, pretty consistently, and uh, he shoots in the seventies. You know, pretty rarely. You know, that's his, that's his game, and he works on it too. You know, I ain't got that aspiration to try to get out there and become a, a seventy uh, or a par golfer. I just love being out there, enjoying being on the course. It's therapeutic for me. You know, especially when the sun is out there shining in my face. Yeah, you know, I don't care what my ball. I gotta ask, um, have you ever played with Barkley? I never played with Charles. Okay. Never played with Charles. You know, yeah, you know, I understand the little hitch he got. He's been working on it. Yeah. Uh, but who knows? Opportunity may present itself one day. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Um that uh, you guys stay in touch and all that. Um and uh can like stoke the competitive fires on the golf course. You know, keep because that 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 competitive nature doesn't leave you, right? You get, no, no, no. He and I was teammates. We played against Al Cart, played against my son and my boy Scott. You know who won. It. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I love it. I love yeah. it. And so yeah, so speaking of Spud, uh, we saw him on TV uh, judging the dunk contest at the halftime of the All Star Game. A very weird uh, setup, out of mm-hmm. the ordinary. Uh, All Star Weekend was condensed to one evening. The three point or the skills competition, three point shootout, the game itself well, for the first half of the game, and then the dunk contest, and then the remainder of the game. Um, no Hornet involvement in All Star Weekend. Uh, Lamelo was named to the Rising Stars team. There's mm-hmm. no game itself to watch, right. but um, that was great to see. Um, but do you have any uh, any takeaways from the All Star events as a whole? Um, how you feel like? How do you feel about how the NBA kind of handled? Uh, a tough situation could try to pull off All-Star Weekend in one day, basically. I think they made the most of what they had in control, what they had control of. I mean, I think, you know, players at early on was had some concerns about going down there and playing an All-Star game because the All-Star game is a fan experience. You know, the fans get opportunity to rub elbows with these stars, you know, that don't have opportunity to do that during the regular season. And this one time, you know, during the course of the year, they get opportunity to do that. And so – the NBA was in a tough place right there. But at the same time, you know, they got obligations. You know, they got TV obligations, contracts they got to um, uh, uh, oblige by. So they understand that if we can't put on, not only have the event with the fans involved, but at least we could put on a show at home for the fans to give them that still that same experience what they do when they're home watching the show, which was which it actually was. It was a show. Yeah. You know, the guys, the skills set. I mean, the, the big fellas represent the, yeah. the big the skills challenge. Yeah which I was a little, you know, disappointed in our guards didn't show up. Uh, but it was great just to see, you know, the skill set of the, of the players, you know, and I think the three-point brought a lot of excitement oh, yeah. you know, with Mike Conley, you know, setting the stage. I think Steph set the stage at the first, putting up 31, and then that second round, you know, Mike Conley put 27 up, and everybody was watching, wanting to see what Stephen was going to do when pressure, you know, was, uh, was put on him. And he showed what he 
capable of doing with pressure. And he bust that pipe so so eloquently. And I was so happy to see. Uh, and then here we had the game. We had the game. And um, I think the guys really showcase what they're capable of doing. And that's where their skill set is now, you know, shooting the ball across half court. You know, shooting yeah. the ball <laughs> one foot in front of half court. That's ridiculous, you know. But And that's a natural shot for those guys. Yeah. You know, it's more like they were just throwing it up. That was a per regular shot within the floor of the game. And that's what you love seeing the beauty of it. Then we topped it off at halftime with slam dunk. You know, the it was a, like you said, it was kind of different format, only having three players in it. But I think it was very entertaining. The, the dunks that was uh, was just uh, was showcased. You know, the one, especially the one what you almost <laughs> kissed the rim. You know, it almost reminded me of of uh, uh, Gerald Green. Yeah, when the blew cupcake. Out the candle. Yeah, yeah, we blew out the candle. So that was interesting, man. I, I really enjoyed it. The, uh, Obi Toppin went between his legs, you know, for a big guy, you know, that agile, that was pretty sweet to see. So mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the weekend. I'm great. I'm, it was grateful that the NBA went along with it, put on the show for the fans at home. Yeah, dunking over his dad and uh, Julius Randle, was it? Yeah. Like, that was really cool. Um, go. I want to go back to the three-point shootout for you because I saw the video, on, I think it was on your Instagram, of you and a very young Steph Curry. <laughs> uh, in a in a in a Hornets locker room, uh, we've seen we've seen what Steph has become as an NBA player. Um, is it surreal to you, um, or like have you gotten used to seeing him at, in this light? And if uh, and if so, or if 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 so, like when did it kind of hit you? Like oh my god, this this kid I I held in my hands is potentially maybe the best shooter of all time. Like can you, can you talk to me about that and his kind of like his arc? It is, a, it is a surreal at, at, at times. It's surreal to see that this is happening. But now I'm accustomed to it. Yeah. You know, because it's been happening for quite some time. It wasn't just a one or two year thing. This has been going on for quite some time. And he's really, you know, put his print on the game and showcase, you know, the game in a way where no one was able to do it. Um, shoot the ball from that far out with that type of arc and accuracy, you know, it's unheard of. And just to see him just be, just relish in these moments. You know, I'm so happy for him, for his family, uh, especially for Dallas and uh, Sonny, because I understood what they what, what they all, you know, had to do in order to sacrifice to, to make sure these kids understand the values, the true values of they had, you know, the principles that they have instilled within themselves. And to see him put it all in full circle, I mean, see it come full circle, and him to be this type of player as the, as the, as the NBA, you know, unanimous, uh, unanimous two-time uh, uh, MVP. It's unheard of, man. It's unheard of. So I'm just so thrilled. And I'm again, I'm just going to continue to enjoy this moment because it's very rare to see a guy that you held in your arm be <laughs> this good. Yeah, it's, it's so it's so cool. It's so cool. That, that video was great. If you haven't seen it, go check out. I think it was your Instagram, maybe your Twitter. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty it's, sure it was on your Instagram. Go check uh-huh. it out. It's, it's really cool, really cool footage. Um, G- giving them the airplane ride. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, so just to kind of st- take a step back and like uh, looking at the Hornets specifically, um, the Hornets had the time, had a weekend off basically um, to rest, recover, refresh the batteries a little bit. Uh, can you talk to me about the, the player kind of mindset of that, <laughs> that like that all star break? And then what you look to kind of accomplish outside of the break. Well, for a lot of the players, it's the opportunity to just get some rest, you know, especially ones who are not playing. Uh, take advantage of, you know, getting your body uh, back healed as, as, as healthy as you possibly can and really take advantage of that time because it goes quickly. But those time that those days could be very valuable if you do the right thing, because that second half is going to be a grind um, for the Hornets, you know, being in the seventh spot right now. You know, we have a 7-10 play-in playoff type of situation, mm-hmm. and these guys right there in the hunt. Uh, as long as they continue to keep playing with one another and for each other, I think they're going to be fine. Um, getting a healthy team back will, will help. You know, Devontae Graham been out, yeah. uh, Haywood, as well as uh, nursing a little knick-knack injuries. You know, so having a healthy team with everybody now feeling comfortable and confident about, you know, going forward, this could be very exciting basketball for the Hornets, you know, this last, you know, the second half. You know, last year, you know, they had one of the better seasons, uh, one of the better records, you know, in the second half of the season. So hopefully they can continue that uh, this year uh, with this group that they have. Yeah, I'm really 
really um, confident in in this this team setup um, as the team currently exists. Uh, we haven't seen the team, as you mentioned, Devontae's injury at full strength in a while. Um, there have been some rumors about potential trades um, and all that, but I look at like Devontae being healthy again as a trade, uh, getting him back as an option because – he, whether he starts or whether he's coming off the bench, that is a force that will greatly improve this team. We've seen the, the team struggle at times and not having that change of pace to go to um, is, is really uh, costing the team some games in the first half of the season. So a healthy Devontae, Terry continuing on his form, Hayward being at, back healthy, um, and then LaMelo keeping up the, <laughs> the pace he's on just – outperform performing every single rookie this year in every category it's 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 mad what the this young man is pulling off um so i'm very uh very excited i'm very grateful that the the second half of the season is is here and that the team is playing the way it is going into the second half of the season yeah it's very promising absolutely and the way these guys had played up until the All-Star break. You know, they playing some stellar basketball and playing some exciting basketball. And they play, like I said, they playing with one another. And that's when you get a lot of good results when you share the basketball. Everybody, you know, utilizing their strength. And Romello, uh being the leader, being spearheading in that, um, getting guys an opportunity to, you know, making them better, where they put them in a situation where they can be successful. And his continued maturity of understanding what he's really capable of doing. I think he's starting to understand now, how and when I was talking earlier about the tempo, how once he because he was just playing basketball. Yeah. Now I think he really understand what he means and how he can impact the game. And um, and still young, but he still brings that intensity night and night. He takes no plays off, uh, no matter what the score is. And that's something it's, it, it builds culture, you know, and it creates a lot of good things that when, when you have a player that's leading in those ways and be so young. I mean, the sky's just the limit. And this doesn't have to be specific to LaMelo, but in general, when you have these these younger players or even like rookies or even like first, second year players that are more involved in playing all these games that they haven't played before at this level, how, do, how does a player like avoid or do their best to recover from hitting a wall um, from playing NBA level basketball for this many games? And normally the college players have that type of uh, difficulties, you know, because you only play 30 plus games in college. And when you come to that next level, which is the NBA, uh, you play 72, but not 82. Now, I mean, you should be 82. Now you play 72 games. You know, that's double almost your season. If you go further in the playoff, you know, that kind of add more to it. So players hit that wall, you know, but a player like LaMelo, I think what helped him was playing overseas, you know, understanding, um, multiple uh how many because you know, they practice twice a day over there you know and they play so many games and i think he had that experience already at an early age that where he's relishing this moment and saying you know his continued maturation i don't think he will get tired i don't think he will hit a wall mainly because he had that experience overseas already and it's just now being able to continue on it continue to stay uh focus on the, the task at hand yeah, and you know, one guy, there are a lot of contributors to this team um, mm-hmm. that make you know the the ship go here. But I, I really think Malik Monk, um, as a guy to watch the rest of the way, could be a, a real serious game changer because this guy can come in cold and heat up in an instant, and he may be the difference in a seed spot or two. Um, what, what are you looking for out of Malik Monk the rest of the way? Because um, Devontae will be back. I'm a little concerned we'll, we'll see his minutes, Malik's minutes. That's a tongue twister. Malik's minutes diminish <laughs> <laughs> with Devontae coming back. Um, I don't know. But what do you think about Monk and uh, where he can kind of lead this team as a, as a contributor off the bench, if, if at all? Well, that's the, the challenge with Coach JB and his staff going to have to have because Malik – has been playing some stellar basketball, coming in and giving them some really um, efficient uh, minutes on that floor and putting some, you know, pressure on the defenses, you know, by his scoring ability. Um, so the coach going to have his, you know, challenge in trying to make sure to keep these guys happy 
mm-hmm. and where you know the minutes kind of can balance itself out, but somebody's gonna get left out. You know, it's just the way it is. And hopefully, you know, it could be a situation where everybody's on the same page, everybody can continue to stay professionally because they're gonna need each and everybody that's over there to be productive as they wanna is trying to make this last run. All right, yeah, um, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. They, they're back with the uh, the first game back with the Pistons. Uh, that game is in in Charlotte. It's for frontline workers only, which is which is great. And then Saturday will be the first game with fans, um, general admission fans uh, against the Raptors. I will. I'm there. I got my tickets. I'm going to be in the building. I'm very excited about it. Um, and I heard like I was able to get a pre-sale code, so I <laughs> got it. And I heard when it like it was like the tickets went on sale like I think 10 a.m. Okay. on um like that Friday, and they were gone and almost immediately. Um, mm-hmm. A you know it's 3,000 seats, so fewer seats to sell, but also the demand is here right now. Um, so we're getting to that point where we'll have some fan in, like fan injection. <laughs> into this ball club, which is super exciting to be a part of. I'm really curious to see what the what the vibe is like in the arena uh, compared to a packed house. Um, I think, I don't know if this is a bold prediction or not, but I think that 3,000, it may sound like 15,000 if this team comp- continues to play this way. Um, what, what do you expect out of the, 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 the Charlotte fan base, I guess, as they fill in that... Uh, fill up the Spectrum Center? Because I, I feel like, you know, it's been a long buildup. Um, team wasn't allowed into the bubble because they were one mm-hmm. win short. And then they had, so they had all that to wait for. And then the whole first, the whole off season, the whole first half of this season, now they're back in the building. It's going to be exciting. It's gonna, I think it's going to be really electrifying mm-hmm. because they, like you said, the, the buildup has been uh, overwhelming. You know, people have been wanting to see this team. You know, especially with a little mellow uh, at the helms of it. So they really excited about it. I mean, it's the first opportunity they get to see the team. So I think it's going to be very loud in there. And I think the team will feed off of that, off that energy. Um, that's one of the things about the Hornets the fan base. You know, they, 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 they get behind you. When they get behind you, they, 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 they could be that sixth man. Yeah. And they really get you over that hump. So it's exciting to know that the fans are going to be back in the building. I know that everybody's excited about it. Um, and, and, and rightfully so, the first, uh, the uh, the central worker should be the first ones to get the opportunity to, to see the team um, because what they meant to us, you know, throughout this pandemic, it, it, I mean, it, it's, it's, not, it's second to none mm-hmm. um, because they continue to put their lives on the line for us. So being a class act organization always are, it's good to see that we want those uh, uh, individuals the first opportunity to see the team. Almost definitely. So, yeah, we have the Pistons, the Raptors, the Kings, the Nuggets, the Lakers. It gets a little tougher as we can. It's a nice, oh, like, yeah. a little slow run up, and then it gets, it gets like it goes straight up. <laughs> that's when, as far that's as, when we need them the most. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, but, yeah, this is this is cool. Um, there's some trade. We're getting closer to the trade deadline. I don't know what to believe or not to believe. So I don't know if we can get into that at all today, maybe in a, in a future podcast um, as more things go out. There's some rumors about Vucevic from – the Magic, Fournier from the Magic. Uh, who was another name I saw? Um, what was it? Hassan Whiteside. Obviously, I think the team could do with some new blood in the uh, in the center department. But at this point, it's a like, I don't know what to believe. So I'm not going to buy too right. much into anything. But um, I don't you know. Heard some, you heard something from Orlando, Yusevich? Yeah. So there's a few teams. Basically, a few teams are interested. But mm-hmm. the Magic won a lot. In return mm-hmm. and it may, it may they may price themselves out out of any deal Vucevic two-time all-star he was in the all-star game um he would fit in perfectly with this with this Hornets team and it's one of those things where if the Hornets make that move it means they're really going for it because they would have to give up per- first round picks maybe Miles Bridges uh, maybe another young player uh to make the deal work um I don't know if the franchise is in that Stay hey, here, Miles. Yeah, I don't think they're going. I don't think Miles is on the table for that. Yeah, that's, um, that's I think they're going to keep him and Melo together and see what they turn out to be. Um, that's the core right there. Yeah, you know. So bringing in uh, Yusufic, uh, I think it will have to take probably a, um, you know someone like a Malik, you know, um, 
sadly to say for them and probably a pick for anything of that nature to take place um and probably a, a, a guy like Cody, they might throw like Cody Zeller or yeah, Ben Mack in there. Yeah, make the contract. So we'll see. You know, I'm quite sure Mr. Kupchak got his pops, his, his finger on the pops. You know, trying to see what this team needs, and um, and with his understanding, you know, of what this lead is all about and what it takes. I'm quite sure he's doing his due diligence and make sure that he make the right decision if they do decide to to go in a different direction. Yeah, because he meant like I'm looking at the standings right now, and the Hornets are 17 and 18, right? Mm -hmm. The Celtics are in the fourth seed. They're 19 and 17. They're two games away from the fourth seed in the East. I look at that. I'm like, yo, let's trade. Let's give Lucy Richard and let's go. (laughs) (laughs) But you gotta, you can't, you know, you gotta, yeah, gotta be um, Mm -hmm. uh, disciplined in Mm -hmm. the plan to for like long term growth. You can't like. I try not to think of a, a lewd way to saying this. I, short term. Yeah. Short, yeah. Not so <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was thinking of madness up here, trying to keep it clean for the folks. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm, I think this team that's currently set up at the best case can, can climb to the fifth seed. Um, that That's two went to two wins difference between us and the Knicks. I would love to take the Knicks on in the playoffs. I think it'd be really dope. Kind of a throwback. Um, and a winnable, a winnable first round opponent versus the Sixers, Nets, or Bucks. <laughs> I don't want them <laughs> in the first round. Right. But um, yeah, no, this is cool. This is cool. Um, I'm excited that the that basketball's back. Um, All Star Weekend was fun to watch, and uh, we're looking, looking, looking good. I think looking good the rest yeah. of the way. Yeah, we're in good standings. I mean, they did a great enough job the first half to put themselves in this situation. You know, exploring different types of lineup. Uh, we when guys got hurt. Um, so you got to give a lot of credit to the coaching staff and the guys that, you know, stay, you know, focused on all the things that was going on negatively with the organization. Guys stepped up when the next man went down. Mm-hmm. Uh, Melo got his first start and he hadn't looked back um, from it ever since. So I think the team is really happy with where they are right now. And they know that there's, uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. So I'm looking forward to what the second half uh, brings. Oh, same, same. And hope you guys are as well. Uh, you're listening to the Believe in Hornets podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. We're here every week, every Wednesday um, throughout the season. Tell your friends about us. We'd appreciate it. Leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd appreciate that as well. Helps with the algorithms and things like that um, over on the, on the Apple on the Apple side. But yeah, talk to them. Talk to them. Yeah, like come on. What are you doing? Yeah. If you listen, if you made it to this far in the podcast, if you made it to this point in the podcast and you haven't left us a rating, a five star rating. On iTunes, what are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, help us out. Help us out. But uh, Muggsy, I appreciate you. You're kicking it with me once again. Sam, you know, always a pleasure, my brother. You know, it's a, another great one. You know, we enjoyed this great day. It was a sunshine day in Charlotte. We got an opportunity to talk some good. We had some good topics today. We covered some good issues. And uh, we can't wait for the second half to get going, especially with the fans and our building. Well, I'm just looking forward to it. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.